Hey guys, it's Hunter. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Fish. It's been a couple of weeks since the last episode. My bad. It's been really busy. You guys have seen how much content I've been uploading. I'm actually trying to be a real YouTuber now. You know, finally like four years in. Just a quick reminder, don't forget to join the Discord server. It's a great community. It's also where I pull most of the questions from. Plus, we're doing a Smash or Pass thing with your guitars. That's where you do the submissions. It's been really fun. Link in the description. In the meantime, f that like button up if you go on to enjoy the video. That actually really helps out. And now let's uh, jump into your questions. Grant4 asks, is this random Spotify account I found earlier your actual Spotify or just someone with the same name? Yep, that's me. I generally don't upload to Spotify that often. I haven't in a while. I really only upload like full completed songs. I'm really proud of how the demo tracks come out, but with a couple exceptions, they don't have vocals or anything. So maybe one day I'll get around to getting a vocalist and fleshing them out into real songs for an EP. In the meantime, I'm just keeping them as exclusive downloads for the amazing Patreon supporters like Ivan. Yo, the Patreon support is basically how I've been able to upload more often. Every bit of the pledges either goes to Luke for mixing or to Jordan or Connor for editing. I actually don't make any money off of Patreon. It all goes back into making the channel and to making the content more awesome or at least as good as it can be. So I like to keep the files and the tabs as exclusive rewards for the people that essentially make it all happen. But back to Spotify. As I said, I do plan on making an EP at some point, but in the meantime, if you want to hear like the three songs that I wrote with uh, Reese, the vocalist from a previous band, that I've deemed good enough to be up there on Spotify, feel free. It's probably not what you're thinking, it's not metal at all, and I can't remember if the mixing is any good, it's been a while, but yeah, it's up there on Spotify. Enjoy. Gusto Mialaro asks, Someday say hi to your viewers from Brazil. We like you, man. Kill a gal. What's up, Brazil? Brazil's actually really high on my list of countries to visit. Seems like a really cool place. But yeah, shout out to the viewers from Brazil. Where's everyone else watching from? Patrol Duty says, Damn, I hate the Switch placement. Sad. I really like this Fusion T series, but Switch placement is a deal breaker for me. Well, I've got some good news. As a lot of you know, and I try to mention this as often as possible for a disclosure, I helped design and spec guitars for Harley Benton. And last year when I did the videos on the original Fusion Ts, the Switch placement and angle was a piece of feedback. We got a decent amount for these models. It wasn't really something we thought about because like it was basically the same placement as a normal Telecaster, just minus the big control plate. So we were a bit surprised it came up more often than usual, even from other YouTubers. So we changed it, put it at a bit more of an angle as well. So it's a more natural position going from strumming to switching between pickups. And in fact, along with that, this week we dropped a bunch of new colors as well. And these might be a little familiar if you've been following the regular, more stratty Fusion 3s. We've literally taken some of the best ones and made them available for the T-shape. So we've got Daphne Blue Satin, Ice Blue Gloss, Dark Pink Gloss, Flamed Bangle Burst Gloss, the awesome Silver Sparkle Gloss, and shell pink satin. And that last one, it's not a true shell pink, it's kind of that really, really subtle one from the EX84s, but that's still what they're calling it. All two point trims, but the big thing for this new drop is that they've all got roasted flame maple necks. So you get that crazy figuring, and most importantly, the added stability because there's no moisture in the neck. Stainless steel frets as well. Those are massive specs for 450. So yeah, we really liked the colors we were launching for the Fusion 3s and wanted to add some of those options for fans of the T-shape as well. Personally, I prefer the Fusion Ts over the regular Fusions. I like the shape much better. So I've been pretty excited for these. And again, I've been pushing for lefties, but I guess it just wasn't possible this time around. I'll be real with you guys, a fucked supply chain makes certain things quite difficult. But yeah, those are the new Fusion T colors. What do you think? And what other colors, what other improvements would you like to see? We're always looking in the comments for feedback. Vicky Squires says, I love your sponsor segments. So random. Thank you. Awkward and terrible segues are part of this channel's brand and identity, I guess. May as well embrace it. Speaking of which, ironically enough, that's probably one of the least awkward sponsor segues I've ever done. But yeah, let's take a quick second and thank Ridge Wallet for sponsoring today's video. So if you're unfamiliar with the Ridge Wallet, one, you might not watch as much YouTube as I do, and two, Welcome to the channel. They've been a familiar supporter of the channel for a while, and also they're redefining the wallet. And why are they doing that? Well, traditional wallets, they kind of suck. They're bulky, they tend to collect all mountains of old receipts, unused loyalty cards, and it's just the worst. So Ridge decided to do things differently, 
with this. Super compact design with durable plates made of aluminum, titanium, or carbon fiber. Currently, I'm rocking the black titanium one because, well, obviously, it's the most metal one. <laughs> Looks super cool, and they've got a variety of designs to match your personality. They're even RFID blocking to thwart would-be scammers from stealing your card information. Trust me, you don't want that. I love mine, and honestly, not carrying around all the useless crap has been strangely free. If you want to see why so many people are switching over to the Ridge wallet, head over to ridge.com slash agafish, and the best part, for you guys, if you use the code agafish at checkout, you'll get 10% off your order. That's ridge.com slash agafish, code agafish for 10% off your order. Free yourself from the plague of useless crap, supports the channel. And while you're doing that, let's get into the next question. That one guy called Tony56 asks, random question, but if you were forced to join any band you want, which two bands would you pick? Forced to join a band, like, at gunpoint? I guess sometimes working with musicians is absolute pain. Uh, first one, Metallica, for sure, that would be dope. Still my favorite band of all time, epic live shows, I can't wait to see them in a few days. And playing for that amount of money, f it, yeah, I'll get bullied. Turn my guitars all the f the way down, James. And the second one, probably a day to remember. Pop Punk with Breakdowns. Musically, that's the perfect combo. Those live shows are a ton of fun too. And it's kind of interesting. I get a lot of shit for not currently playing in a real band or whatever. Truth be told, I don't really come from a musical world. My degree is in political science, which, <laughs> yeah. Most of my friends are either doctors in training or lawyers or consultants. And like, okay, I'm probably not gonna make any friends here. I love hanging with musicians, but man, at least in my experience working with musicians, it's a completely different culture. It can be a struggle to be productive, sometimes to say the least. And I'm someone that needs to be productive all the time. It's almost frustrating when I'm not. So kind of the common thing between the two bands I've chosen, apart from like creatively, the music's fucking awesome. They're driven, they're professional, and that's a big reason as to why they've been so successful. Actually, Nickelback would be sick too. Like I highly doubt they slum it in a van when they go on tour. Private jet to the next arena show? Yeah, f it, I'm down. But yeah, what about you though? Top two bands you join and why? Raymond Sevier asks, anyone know what he has behind the nut of his guitar? Is it a fret wrap where he keeps a capo there? Been a while since we answered this question, used to answer it weekly. It's a Jimmy clip. Foreskin Gamer Extreme, who still has one of my favorite usernames ever, asks, favorite and least favorite amp you own? Oh man, that is so tough. Favorite, it's a toss up between the Rev Generator 120, the Hughes and Kettner Triumph Mark III, and the Angle Savage Mark II. I think my favorite sounding one right now is the Savage. It's somehow stupid thick with like 17 Cs and also amazingly tight at the same time. I have no idea how Angles managed to do that. The Triamp is absolutely insane as well, as you can clearly see. I will say I do use the Rev the most though, because it has the XLR out with IRs already loaded, so I don't have to bother with a load box or anything like that. Just turn it on, get to playing, writing, recording. It's so freaking convenient. And it's also a modern high gain head, aggressive and tight. It's just honestly one of the best gear purchases I've ever made. It streamlines my workflow. It's so convenient, which is almost a ridiculous thing to say about a big 120 watt tube head. But here we are, we move. As for least favorite, uh, that's hard too because I like all my amp heads, otherwise I wouldn't keep them. So I guess the Katana, probably. For what it is, I mean, it serves a completely different purpose to the Savage or the Triamp. It's a $350 Swiss Army knife. For the money, it covers a shitload of tones and effects very well. It's an affordable, solid state modeler, so it obviously doesn't have the natural, alive sounding tone of a $3,000 tube head. I'm also not expecting it to. But yeah, with some amps, every time you plug into them, it's like, holy shit. And I mean, every time. Boutique amps are expensive for a reason. Which I'll admit, I didn't really understand until I got my first one, and now it's like, fuck, they've multiplied. If we're to compare it to cars, the Triamp is like a modern Lambo. It's big, it's loud, it's possibly over-engineered, it's expensive to use and to maintain, but god, Damn, is it fun. Sometimes you wake up and you're like, shit, I could go for some Triumph Chonk right now. Then the Katana is a Corolla. It's economical, it's reliant, it's convenient. It'll get you from point A to point B with no complaints. It'll never fight you. It'll just do its job. But it's just not really a Ferrari, is it? Or a Lambo or whatever car analogy we were using. But yeah, I'm curious. For those of you who are fortunate enough to have more than one amp for a tonal variety, What's your favorite, what's your least favorite, and why? And from my channel, if you could steal one amp from me, and that's not a green light to go ahead and do it, but if you could steal one, 
which one would it be? And of course, this being the internet, everybody thinks I'm amazing in the comments all the time. I'm totally kidding. There's a lot of douchebags. It's time for the high praise of the week. Why do you have a guitar channel if you don't play guitar dot 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 really play? You just sound like you don't know shit about anything. I mean, it's not like I have literally 200 videos of me playing guitar and analyzing a wide array of guitar gear. Or that I helped design and spec guitars for one of the largest guitar brands in Europe. But yeah, I guess I don't know shit about anything. Everyone just follow Justin instead for intelligent hot takes, educated insights, <laughs> exceptional grammar. Boss Bach says fuck that intro track with the British dude was fucking amazing. Please make future videos like that. Now this new headless look good. Yeah, so the aforementioned British dude is my good friend Pete Cottrell. I asked him to lay down some tasty fish and chips on my new dull hand demo track and he absolutely killed it. I've been trying to incorporate more guest appearances because I have my own tones, my own opinions, and it's always great to bring in other musicians for more musical flavor, I guess. Obviously, Pete is an incredible shredder, so is Rob Chapman. And actually, if you haven't seen the video in question yet, since we're at the end of this episode, if you're looking for something else to watch in case you missed it, since last Ask Fish episode, and it's actually been a while, I think the last one, we talked about Kirk Hammett's new leaked LTD V1. But since then, I collaborated with Pete Cottrell on a video on new updated V2 Dullahan's. I had a hand in designing the original run and making improvements on the second. Headless with stainless steel frets and roasted maple necks, so they're super stable. I'll be honest, I'm not a huge fan of headless guitars, but it's 450 bucks, which is unheard of in the world of headless. They're usually much, much pricier with those specs because it is such a niche market. Anyways, it was a cool track, went maximum stupid with the Octaver for the breakdowns, and of course, it's got some Pete Cottrell shred on there. You should watch it just for the track, honestly. Then there was a new episode of Boxes in the Kitchen, where we got a haul from a brand most people might not be expecting on this single cult channel. Hot Wheels vibes intensified greatly. Then the first episode of a still yet unnamed series where you guys sent your guitars in to be smashed or passed on. Smash could fish, maybe? Listen, your guitars are all trash, it has to be said. <laughs> I'm kidding, you guys actually have some sick guitars. Keep them coming, it was great to see what you guys are playing and it was a lot of fun to get the community's thoughts on your guitars. And last but not least, we checked out the new Hype Angle Iron Ball Special Edition. It's a lunchbox head that is the latest representation of the next generation of tube amps, marrying modern technology and conveniences like an integrated noise gate, digital effects, a built-in IR loader with traditional tube tone. It's really interesting because because just a few years ago, everyone was ringing the death bell for tube amps, modelers were the future. Now there's kind of a shift in the opposite direction. There's almost a harmony forming, like people are using the two in tandem. I don't know, really interesting space to keep our eyes on, but the main point is this amp does everything and it sounds fucking mean as shit. Links to all those in the cards and in the description. But that is the end of this video. Thanks to Ivan, the rest of the amazing patrons for supporting the channel, and of course everyone who uses my affiliate links. It all really helps out social media, merch, and Discord server links are in the description. As always, thank you so much for watching. You've been awesome, and I'll see you for the next video.